by the way, be sure to check, uh, thank this lady for playing this piano. People from all over the world are writing in, thanking her for her faithfulness in playing. And that's all God asks for us to do is be faithful. Now, this is going to be a hard lesson to teach. It's going to be real fast. Uh, I only got 45 minutes to get 28 pages in. I reduced it down from 36. That's about as far as I could go, so it's going to be quick. But we're going to be looking at the seven trumpets. The long suffering is now over. The wrath of God has come. And we'll be looking at Revelation chapter 8 and 9. Before we get started, let's pray because I need him more than I need anything else. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this time that we can come together and open up your word. I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit in teaching. I pray that, uh, that no words proceed out of my mouth that don't come from the word of God. And Lord, I pray, give me strength, give me power. For I ask in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 13, verse 9, it says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of the heavens and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened, in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for the, their evil and the wickedness of their iniquities, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. The Lord Jesus Christ is about ready to, to, to return to take his ch children home. We are at the beginning of the end. Agenda 21 is being employed as we speak. Fires, floods, attacks on our food supply, plagues, wars, everything is gearing up to move a population of the world in centralized locations. These are all being calls to centralize the population for what we call Agenda 2030, or what they call Agenda 2030. Whatever it takes for the beast system to come into existence, that's what the world is going to do. And we're seeing that all the time, everywhere. And if you go on and do your research, a lot of these uh, fires, a lot of these uh, floods, they're not natural. In Psalms chapter 30, verse 11, it says, there, there is a generation that curseth their fathers and doeth not bless their mothers. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaws teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. This is describing a demon-possessed society that we're living in. When you go into uh, chapter 8 and chapter 9, the first thing you're going to see is that there is a lot of ands. And there's a lot of ands in chapter 8 and chapter 9 because this, when this thing breaks loose, when the tribulation starts, it's going to be bam, 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 bam. You're not going to be able to catch your breath. You see stuff happening all the time right now where one situation after another, after another, and after another. And, you know, every time a storm, I hear thunder, I pray, Lord, protect my home, protect my family, protect my church family. Keep us all safe during the storms. Chapter 8 has 41 ands in 13 verses. Chapter 9 has 51 ands in 21 verses. We looked at the seals. We looked at the 144,000. And now we're in the middle of the tribulation. 
And if you figure this thing out, 21 uh, seal or a total of 21 plagues come on this earth. God judges or judges with 21, seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials. You divide that by seven, you get three. So every three months or four months, you're going to get a plague. It's going to be horrible. And I'm, I'm not trying to make this a rosy. I'm trying to scare you to, out of hell. That's what I want to do tonight or today. We are so close to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we get to the fifth seal or fifth trumpet, the son of perdition is expelled out of hell and indwells the murdered beast and continues for the next three and a half years of hell on earth. So we are about ready to step off the edge. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 1 and, and 2, it says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And I saw the, the seven angels which stood before God, and to them was given the seven trumpets. Now the first verse says there was silence in heaven for a half hour. That proves there's no women in heaven. <laughs> Just kind of break the ice a little bit. I'm not trying to scare Christians. I'm trying to get Christians praying in the right direction. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, and salvation is still possible right now, but it's about ready to close the door. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, For he saith, I have heard thee in the time accepted. In the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Don't wait for the trumpets to blow. God says he's going to turn you over to a strong delusion. Some people argue that point, but I don't know how he can't. Revelation chapter 8, verse 3 says, it talks about the prayers of the saints. This is how we should be praying right now. In Revelation chapter 8, 3, it says, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given to him incense that he should offer, up, offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar, which is was before the throne. If you look at my little chart up here, I got everything right in the center and everything comes out from the center, but it goes clockwise. You'll notice that there's four plant, uh, planet Earths on there and the first four trumpets are directed towards the Earth and the next two are directed towards man. And the third one will be when Jesus Christ comes and takes... Claims, uh, claims the earth once again and gets ready for Armageddon. And that's where the pouring out of the vials comes in. These things are progressive. You got the seals. They're tough. But the trumpets are worse. And when you get to the vials, it's unbearable. And that's where we're going. God is seen here postponing judgment long enough to hear and smell the prayers of the saints. And you, if you notice, in between all these things, there's a little, there's a little time. I think God hates to, to pour out his wrath on this world. Now, another thing, when you look at this, I want you to remember that Jesus Christ went to the cross... He was judged by three, ju or three judgments, three courts. He was whipped, he was flogged, he was brutally beaten, and then he was, went to the cross. And he was on the cross for six hours. Three of those hours, it was daylight. Three other hours, there was complete darkness. 
And if you doubt that, that it was darkness, you can go to the Chinese. They got it recorded. You can go to Rome. You got it recorded. You go to the Mayans. They got it recorded. You go all over the world, and they record three hours of darkness that very day. So there's no doubt that Jesus Christ did exist. He did die on the cross, and he died for you. And if you don't receive him now, you got hell to pay. And what's really bad about all this is you go, to, you go through all this tribulation and you make it to the end and then you're still thrown into hell because you did not receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you're only in there for a short while, a thousand years, and then you're taken out and thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. And it's not going to be a fun place. But the prayers of the saints... You read this in uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. It says, In the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. How many people have died over the years for the Lord Jesus Christ? How many people have martyred? Their blood is going to be avenged. Because they prayed, they cried out with a, a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And God is going to judge this world horrendously. In Psalm chapter 59, verse 13, David says, Consume them in wrath, consume them that they may be not be, and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth, Selah. And at the evening let them turn, return, and let them make noise like dogs, and go around about the city, and let them wander up and down for meat and grudge. David prayed for vengeance. We should be praying for vengeance for all the terrible things that are going, into this wor going on in this world. Children are disappearing by the thousands and thousands and thousands. And they're being, if, if you want to know what they're going through, ask me after the service because I can't say it on the internet because it's too horrible. Set thou a wicked man over them, over him, and let Satan stand on his right hand. And that's what happens in the tribulation. <laughs> Revelation chapter 8, verse 5, it says, And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were, were voices and thunders and lightnings and earthquakes. This is repeated three times in the book of Revelations. In verse 6 it says, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Because of the prayers of the saint, God is now judging the world. His wrath is about to be poured out. When you want to find out about the voices and thunders and lightnings and earthquakes, you go to Revelation chapter 8 verse 5. That's where we've been right now. And then Revelation chapter 11 verse 19 and then again in Revelation chapter 16, verse 18. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 7, it says, And the first angel sounded, and there was hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees were burnt up. And all the grass was burnt up. When you stop thinking about trees, we see a lot of trees burning right now. We, we have to smell the smoke and see the haze in the skies. and It's a mess. But all the green grass, all these little furry feather friends out there, you know, they're going to be hurting because there's no grass to eat. The green's going to be gone. If you look down here, it's kind of blackened around the earth. That's on purpose.
David prayed for the destruction of his enemies, but God is going to judge this world because of its wickedness. And the best way to punish people is to take away all their resources, take away the beauty from the earth. There was something discovered years ago in the bottom of the oceans. It's called frozen methane hydrate. And this is like ice on the bottom of the ocean. And they brought it up and they take a match and light it and it burnt just like a, uh, a candle until it melted. This is going to fall on the earth, catch everything on fire. When you look at this word mingled blood or fire mingled with blood and the blood of the saints, you can't help but think of the blood of the martyrs. And the fire represents God's anger. And the hell represents the law. What happens when in the law when someone does something worthy of death? They stone them. But these stones start out, don't start out as big as they, they end up in the end because as it progresses, the stones get a lot bigger. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 12 says, and, But these, as natural brute beasts, made to, be, or made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Yes, this is not a feel-good message. This is the word of God. This is what's coming. This is where we've come to. This is, this is man and his, his wisdom has brought us to this point where everything is, that's good is being destroyed. And God's going to help them. You talk about global warming. We'll get to the next of these chapters. There ain't going to be no worrying about global warming. There's going to be worried about staying alive. Psalms chapter 79, verse 2 says, The dead bodies of my servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heavens and the flesh of my saints, unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water around about Jerusalem, and there is none to bury them. And that's what's going to be, this, that's what the world's going to look like. It's going to be a bunch of dead bodies. You take two billion people in the, in the, in the seals that, that are killed, and then you get into here, people are going to be dying all the time, and then there's going to be a mass murder of one-third of the population that's left. And then when you get into the, to the there ain't going to, man, it's going to be a scarce uh, commodity. There ain't going to be many. The Bible says that one, seven women will take one man to be his, their, their wives. And they said, we'll feed ourselves and we'll clothe ourselves, but take our reproach away from us. There ain't going to be no live-ins. There ain't going to be no uh, uh, one day you have your girlfriend living with you and the next day you have another girlfriend living with you and all this stuff. It's going to be judged by the rod of iron by the Lord Jesus Christ. And you think it's living by the law is tough now? Wait till that happens. Revelation chapter 8, verse 8 says, And the second angel sounded, and a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And a third part of the sea became blood. Whenever the Bible is referring to the sea, it's probably talking about the Mediterranean, but this is going to be one-third of the, of the uh, waters are going to be turned to blood, one-third. When you get into the, to the vials, all of it's going to be turned to blood. And the sun's going to be turning seven times hotter. Yeah. It'll probably be right around the Roman Empire. But America's not going to escape. America is tied in with the Roman Empire quite... Uh, it's a terrible thing when you look at it. 
it, it makes us all slaves if you, if you look at it. I'm not a slave to no man. I'm a, I'm a, I belong to the king. And if you're born again, you belong to the king. You're not a slave to anyone. And that's the only reason that things haven't changed as bad, fast as they want it to change is because we still have some kings, sons of the kings, still on earth. When we're taken out of here, all this stuff is going to go... And you're going to be so confused. But you look at America. America, it talks about America, uh, this uh, Babylon being a, a, a enslaving people. And there's more slaves in America than ever before. America is responsible for most of the slaveries of the souls of men through porn addiction, through sexual addiction, through drug addiction, through game addiction through child abductions, sexual slaveries, perverting our children in schools and making them slaves to the, to the medical uh, industry. And then they, give, they feed you GMO foods. The Bible says not to mingle seeds together, and that's exactly what our, our government is doing in trying to put down our throats, genetically altered seeds. And they're trying to genetically alter you. Luke chapter 17 verse 2 says, It were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and he cast into the sea than he should offend one of these little ones. Talking about children. But it's also talking about you. In Revelation chapter 18 verse 21, God explains how he's going to judge that. He says, and a mighty angel took up a, a, a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea. How many, I wonder how many people are going to be attached to that millstone. Thus with violence shall the great city of Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Do you want to be here? Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 25 says, Behold, I am against thee, O Destroying mountains, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks, and I will make thee a burnt mountain. And that's what America is going to end up one day. Those purple, ma uh, purple ma mountain majesties are going to be blackened. Do you want to be here or do you want to go to heaven and be with our Lord Jesus Christ? Revelation chapter 8 verse 9 says the third part of the creatures which were in the sea had, that had life died and the third part of the ships that were destroyed. So there's going to be a lot of ships destroyed from this tsunami, from this mountain falling into the, to the sea and it's going to kill a lot of the, the uh, life that's in the, in the sea. But I don't think it's talking about fishies. I think it's talking about those things that are... Navy says that are living under the sea that fly out every once in a while and raise havoc and then they go back into the sea and they hide. You talk to Russian uh, or you look at what the Russians are saying, they're saying there's cities down underneath the, the oceans and these things are coming out as UFOs. The Bible says that the Antichrist is going to come up out of the sea and the false prophet's going to come up out of the earth. Now, we're living in a day when that's possible. Before, it was all spiritualized. Well, it's from the sea of the population. No, the Bible's literal. Everything in the Bible is literal. It's not spiritual. God wants you to know what's going to happen, and, and there's no uh, doubt about it. Revelation chapter 8, verse 10 and 11. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell on third parts of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became worm, Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were, not, they were made bitter. Now, when you look at this, 
You think, well, how in the world is people going to drink if the water's all poison? Well, you know, if you look at what God said to the apostles, he says, when I, when, when I send you out, I'm going to give you the gift of the apostles. You can drink anything and not die. So if you had any doubts that these 144,000 are coming will have, won't have the gift of the apostles, this pretty much clears it up. They're not going to, have, they're not going to be uh, killed by drinking water. Only those who do not have the seal of God. But it also says, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So you better stay close to that 144,000 when they come. Because <laughs> when you drink something, you're going to need some help. <laughs> but Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, Jesus says, For then shall a great tribulation such as not since the beginning of time of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And we're not talking about Calvinists. We're not talking about Jehovah Witnesses. We're not talking about Mormons. We're not talking about Catholics. We're talking about Jews. They are the elect during the tribulational period. The whole purpose for Jacob's trouble is to bring G the Jews back to Jesus Christ. But you say, well, I'll go hide in the woods. They're burnt. I'll go hide in a cave. They're already sealed up because pe people have already moved in there, these elite. But everything is going to happen so quickly. In Isaiah chapter 24, verse 18, it says, And shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise and fears of, to fall into the pit he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in a snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do quake. There's no escape. That's what he's saying. You can't escape this. You're going to die if you're living here in the tribulation. Hell's expanding itself. You look around, every time you turn around and look at the newspaper or new, uh, articles about earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, they're going off all the time. Hell is expanding itself. It's getting ready for, this, for the new occupants that are coming. So God is renovating hell so that you can fit in there if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. You better get saved today. Amen. Think of hell as a big bathtub. And when you turn on the fault, both faucets and all that water's running in, that's what hell's going to be like during the tribulational period. It's going to be pouring in and pouring in and pouring in. And those, every drop is a soul going to hell. Revelation chapter 9 verse 6 says, And in those days men shall seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. All this stuff is going to be, you're going to want to commit suicide. You want to commit, you want to hang yourself. But it's not going to help you. You're not going to die. You might be hanging by a rope, screaming out for help. Somebody cut you down. What a horrible way. What a horrible time. The fourth trumpet says, and the third part of the day, light will not shine. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 12, and it says, The fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Now you can get into a big theological study on this, but I ain't got time. But if you want my notes, just ask for them. I'll send them to you. What's going on here? Remember I told you to remember about Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. And he was on the cross. After three hours, everything went dark. 
Everything went completely dark around the world. The sun didn't shine. The stars didn't shine. The moon didn't shine. And that's when the demons of hell came up and started tormenting our Savior while he was on the cross. In Psalms chapter 22, verse 12, it says, Many bulls have come past me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gape upon me with their mouths as a raving and roaring lion. When you get to hell, or when you're during the tribulation, that darkness comes, there's going to be creatures all over the place that are going to want to get to your blood because they're thirsty. Or there's creatures out there, or beasts, even little Fifi that you baby over is one day is going to try to take a nip or two. I'm not making this stuff up. Think about it. If you've ever been in a house after a, a person's died and they had a dog inside there for three or four days, you know what that, that animal does? It starts eating on, the, on their master. Devil's attacking. They're doing it right now. Things are coming up out of the ground. There's all kinds of reports. I mean, I stay on the Internet a lot, more than I should probably, reading about these things that are being reported. All those things that used to scare people at night, you know, and you'd tell these little tales and you'd watch these movies and they'd talk about what happened back way back when. Well, these things are starting to come back out. When Christianity came on the scene, they pushed all this stuff underground, under the sea, and they hid from man because there was a God in heaven and he was determined to win some souls. So he kept them safe. You go to India, they worship this stuff. They're called avatars. And these avatars are a mixture. Uh, it's like a premortal mixture of DNA that's oozing in hell, and it produces these creatures that are not human, not animal. They're just something, a mixture of both. You've seen the, these gods over in India. They have an elephant's head and the body of a man and... and must be a pretty strong man to hold that head up. But then you look at, uh, you look at what, what they're doing on the Internet and Facebook. They're trying to get you to give in to becoming an avatar on Facebook. Or they show these movies of avatars. And the avatars are the good guys. And the nasty human beings are the bad guys. Revelations, before he gives these next two or next three uh, trumpets, he says something in verse uh, 13. I like the number 13 in the Bible because it always has something really bad. It says, And I beheld and, and heard an angel flying through the midst of the heavens, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels which are yet to sound. When God says something three times, look out. And what's coming next is horrible. You'll find these woes answered in Revelation chapter 9 verse 11. We're going there. Revelation chapter 11, or 11 verse 12. And 11, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Now these woes all have to do with the beast or the devil and how he comes to earth and how he raises havoc. Remember, there's, 12, there's four of these earths where judgment's done on the earth. Now it's your turn. Look what God's going to do now. CERNs, and I get a lot of stuff on CERNs. CERN says they hope to crack, create a crack in the fabric of dimensions. To become a chism, a breach, a gorge, an abyss. Some great words. God will give them the desires of their depraved heart. He's going to open that abyss. And he's going to release these things. The fifth trumpet. 
I call this hell is unleashed. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw the stars fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the keys of the bottomless pit. And he opened up the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as a smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air was, were darkened. Well, there goes your one-third of the sunlight. It's going to be total darkness. Because when you get rid of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you get rid of your Bible, and there's no hope for you, man, does it get dark. And it will get dark. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and to them was given power as a scorpion of the earth have power. And it was commanded to them that they should not hurt the grass, because there ain't none, of the earth, neither of the green things, neither any tree, but only those men which are not sealed of God in their forehead. So they can't do anything to the 144,000 Jews of the 12 tribes of Israel. Got to make that clear. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Can you imagine being tormented for five months? And their torment was a torment of a scorpion. And when he striketh a man, and in those days men shall seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Am I painting a real good, pretty picture? It's something like Hollywood would make, wouldn't it? One, the first woe. Rev, that wasn't even a woe. Now we get a woe. Or that was a woe. But this woe gets worse. It's like, whoa! Revelation chapter 9, verse 7. And the shape of these locusts were like the shape of a horse prepared for battle. And on their heads were the crowns like gold, and their faces were the faces of men. You talk about transvestite? Or is, is that what he's describing here? A man with the hair of a woman and, and, the, and he has a horse body? What an avatar that one is. And they had hair as a hair of a woman and the teeth as the teeth of a lion. That's a bad creature. That's something out of hell. Remember Jesus Christ when he died on the cross and he suffered hell and the lions gaped at him? You wouldn't accept that. Now God is going to let you have a taste of it. And they had a breastplate as a breastplate of iron. And the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots and many horses running into battle. And their tails like a scorpion and they, had, they were uh, stinging, stings in their tail. And their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, and the king of the bottomless pit, and his name of this Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Hebrew tongue it is Apollyon. That's the same word for Apollo, these rockets they shoot up into the sky. Have we been connect, so connected to the devil that we name our rockets after him? And these rock, you know Apollo means? It means destruction. Do you know what? Perdition means, it means destruction. Could it be that the spirit of Judas Iscariot ascends up and, and takes possession of the beast that has had his right eye and his right arm crippled? These are not to be taken spiritual. These are literal. These are coming up out of hell. In Exodus, 
Remember I told you everything that happened in Exodus is in the samples for us today. And what it says about these locusts in, in Exodus, it says, And they fill, they shall fill thy house and the houses of thy servants and the houses of all the Egyptians. So they're not going to be just casual guests. They're going to be, <laughs> they're going to be your guests at home, in your bed, in your closet. They're going to be everywhere. But these are not normal. These are horses. These things could weigh up to 1,200 pounds. And they sting you. They chase you down. And it's dark. You can't see nothing. It's, it's like those horror movies where they have very little light, and all of a sudden you hear a bunch of some people screaming, and, and you jump, you know, because of the screaming. Like urban legend. Most of your things today are, are that they put on the Internet is about, you know, they're in dark and they got these visual things and they're looking. They can't really see nothing. But they got you on edge, you know, thinking you're going to see Bigfoot or one of these other cryptids. And believe me, there's enough, there's enough videos out there to prove to me that these things do exist. And there's a lot more than just Bigfoot out there. But they, they have a smell of brimstone. And when you start looking at these cryptids, they all stink. They smell like rotting flesh. Everyone who gets around these things reports the same thing. Sulfur, brimstone, rotting flesh, the walking dead. Revelation chapter 9 verse 12 says, woe, one, woe, one woe passed. And behold, there comes two more woes, more hereafter. Oh, Lord, I'm not doing this because I love to scare people. I want, to, I want you to come to the Lord, especially the people on the Internet that have never heard the gospel before. They've all heard this loving gospel. When you receive Jesus Christ, you don't re just believe in the who, like Robert Breaker says, the who is Jesus Christ. The devils believe in Jesus Christ, but you got to believe in the what. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the death, burial, resurrection, and the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on that cross. If you don't put your faith in that, if you don't put your trust in that, you need to get saved. Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. And when he had, uh, you don't have to turn there. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that uh, ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them that, and shall overcome them and kill them. One of the best illustrations I've seen of this is found in Clarence Larkin's Dispensational Truths. If you want to see how this lays out and how it's played out, he did a wonderful job. It is the best I've seen. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth of the sealed, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And all this stuff happens in the middle of the tribulation. So you have the body of, of the, the man of sin. You got the soul of the son of perdition that comes into him. And then you got the devil himself cast down to the earth. That gives you your tr satanic trinity. I thought I'd just throw that in because that's something to think about. God has a trinity. You are a triune God. You are a triune person in that you have a body, soul, and a spirit. And if you don't have the spirit of God in you, then you're none of his. You need the spirit of God that's sealed into your soul, your heart. I've already touched on avatars. 
If you want to see something messed up, go, go to India and study their Hindu religion. It, it's a mess. Revelation chapter 9, verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four corner uh, horns of the uh, golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel that had the trumpets, loose the four angels which were bound in the great r river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were be prepared for, for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of the world. So we got a 200 million the demonic force turn onto the world to destroy a third of the population. What's left? Because it doesn't just a fourth here and a fourth here. The people are dying all the time. And we haven't got to the vials yet. In 917, it says, and I'll have to quit here in a, just a second. And thus I saw the horses in a vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and a jasmine and a brimstone. There we go, brimstone again, stinky. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of a lion, and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these were a third part of the men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. For their power was in their mouth and in their tail, for their tail were like unto a serpent and had heads with them they do hurt. So don't try to sneak up on one of these things. It's got a big old head, serpent's head on his tail. Did I paint a good enough picture for you? Don't go there. We're running out of time. The sixth seal, or seventh seal, is when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. But before he says that, he says that even in verse 20, it says that, that after all this, Man still doesn't repent. Even after all this, man doesn't repent. Man in his pride still thinks he can make it. It's like the rich man who went to hell and he lifted up his eyes and he says, Hey, Father Abraham, send somebody. Don't, don't let my, my family come here. Don't let them come here. It's horrible. Keep them away. And he says, even though someone raises from the dead and Jesus Christ raised from the dead, you still don't believe him. But anyway, let's get to the last verse. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice in heaven. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of our Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. It's about... It, this is the most glorious day. We'll be coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ if you're born again on a big white stallion riding through heaven, conquering this world from sin. Every week, every time the altar is open, everybody should be down here Praying for their loved ones that are lost. Praying for their neighbors that are lost. Praying for anyone that they know that is lost because you don't want them to go there. I don't care if it's their worst enemy and you despise them, you still don't want them to go there. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this, this message, Lord, and I pray that we take heed to it. I pray that it makes us think about our lives and how they count for Christ. Lord, help us.
in these last days to be faithful and to be looking, watching, and waiting, and working for you until you come. Blessed be your holy and righteous name. And I pray for those who are lost, Lord, that they'll come to Christ today. Pray for the pastor as he preaches that you'll give him special endowment from on high. Blessed be your name, for us in Jesus Christ, amen.